So most of you hopefully saw our client survey a couple of months back. Um, so a big thank you for, for those of you that participated in that. Today's webinar is the second in a series of trainings that have been set up to address the overwhelming feedback we received, letting us know that this is the perfect forum um, to provide support on the Hitwise product. So it's also worth noting that over the next six months, we'll be rolling out more of these training webinars, support videos, and guides in line with this feedback, so do watch out for these. So having a look at the agenda, this webinar has been designed to go back to basics and is a perfect intro for new users, as well as clients who are looking for a bit of a refresher. We'll cover our core reporting areas, which are rankings, clickstream, and search intelligence. You'll basically learn how to navigate Hitwise, how to pull quick insights, and how to customize your access. And I'll showcase some of the most popular reports that we have to put you on the path to becoming an expert user. So before kicking off, I just wanted to show you this slide because I feel like it nicely demonstrates where Hitwise sits um, in relation to the data collected via your site-centric tool. Your own site-centric information will give you a clear understanding of what is working internally, whereas Hitwise provides you with an external view, essentially contextualizing your performance within your online industry in order to identify threats and opportunities. So a couple of examples of the benefits of having that external view are that it can highlight um, missed opportunities, such as potential partnerships through an existing organic traffic flow between yours and their sites. Um, it can identify threats to ultimately protect your market's market share. So you might learn that a new competitor is gaining market share in your industry, perhaps. And it also offers ways to grow your business online. So before we get into the reporting side of Hitwise, um, I just wanted to briefly give an overview of the methodolo methodology that we use. So we have a sample of a million users in Australia collected via a diverse range of user panels with full visibility of secure traffic and mobile browsing data. We're reporting information on hundreds of thousands of websites across 170 industries to provide a detailed view of online consumer behavior. Our internet user panels range from free toolbars um, and other internet tools offering services, such as um, perhaps an enhanced search experience, to perhaps a mobile app or even some antivirus software. We carefully select panels to include users from a diverse cross-section of the internet population, ensuring that the HitWise data and um, HitWise data set is highly representative of all online users. Weighting then helps realign the HitWise sample with the population to ensure the accuracy of our results. And then finally, scaling allows um, sample traffic estimates, such as um, visit metrics, to be projected up to actual numbers using third-party population measures, like the Australian Bureau of Statistics. So focusing on the different modules we're looking at today, I'll firstly take you through the uses behind each of them context and also for you to understand um, how you can start to use each report. So rankings, um, it allows you to benchmark your website by visits, time spent on sites, and also page views against your industry. It allows you to evaluate a partner or affiliate's online performance, identify business development opportunities, allows you to monitor new players that are coming into your industry, and also to assess overall industry performance to ascertain if you're um, perhaps over or underperforming by comparison. So moving on to Clickstream, this is looking at the activity before and after a particular website or industry. It allows you to build a clear view of um, who the online compares you to, establish how your marketing mix differs, differs to competitors, it lets you understand which channels or websites have driven visits um, to competitors. Uh, showcase strength of interaction between your site and partner sites. Um, identify potential affiliate opportunities and establish who your competitors are working with. And finally, to identify threats by reviewing the sites visited after your site. Okay, and lastly, we have search, which has a wide range of reports to better inform um, kind of search strategies across the board. It allows you to benchmark your performance within the search landscape. 
product level. The most successful so that can that the new search opportunities by understanding consumer behaviour and also to plan your campaigns more effectively by establishing seasonality. Okay, so now jumping into the tool. When you first log into Hitwise, um, you'll be taken through to the homepage that looks um, a little bit like this. And then the first and most arguably um, probably the most useful tool in, um, in there is called the Profiler. So here you just need to enter a website or select an industry, come up here, and click the Profile button. And in this example, we're going to look at skyscanner.com. So the profile can be a real, real lifesaver when you need insights in a hurry. So it's a really great report to have on your radar. So the page displayed um, after you've hit profile features a selection of modules covering things like benchmarking, audience segmentation, and search marketing, and basically a high-level view of everything that's available in the platform. So here, for example, we've got a really nice overview of the average um, time spent on Skyscanner versus their industry a device level split um, of traffic going to Skyscanner and some of the top level paid and organic search activity. So clicking through to any of the full reports takes you to the full editable version of that report and from here you can start to explore that particular module um, further. Some of these modules may be teasers for metrics um, your subscription does not necessarily have um, or has access to. So. Um, Having these kind of teasers gives you that extra layer of insight that you might not um, normally have access to, but the modules that you don't have access to will basically be um, the full report icon will be grayed out so that you'll know that what you can't um, access is that. Okay, so next we'll move on to customization. A key learning from today is around customizing your access so that the insights you derive from Hitwise are specific to your needs. Clicking on the custom list tab in the toolbar takes you to the custom industries tab. So clicking up here and to the custom industries section down here. As well as benchmarking your online performance against one of our standard Hitwise industries, we offer the ability to kind of cherry pick a selection of websites and create a custom industry that you can just report on. So from here, you just need to create the custom industry. So you just need to give it a name and then click Create. So for this example, we'll call it Training Webinar and click Create. So from here, you can just add in the website URLs manually, or you can upload a CSV um, of a group of um, a group of websites, which will save you quite a lot of time. So if we Enter a website up here and click Add. Or alternatively, you can upload a CSV file from your PC and just click Import. <coughs> so once this is built, it will um, this industry will basically appear as an industry everywhere within your access, so that you can then use it to report on in any of the different Hitwise modules. So these uh, custom industries can typically be a list of your key competitors, perhaps, um, current affiliates that you're working with, or even a list of potential partners. So if your specialism is search, then you'll want to utilize the search term portfolios um, components of the list manager. Uploading the terms you're focusing on for search campaigns from AdWords will basically allow you to establish how you're performing versus your competitors for these terms. So portfolios are also useful to find link building opportunities and establishing search seasonality and demand. Additionally, using a search term portfolio of your brands will allow you to see if any competitors are actually bidding on your brand. So later in the webinar, we'll touch on how best to utilize these, but for now, I'll just show you how to build them. So you need to navigate to the search term portfolio section of the list manager. And as with custom industries, you just need to give your portfolio a name and click create. 
and you can either manually enter the terms into the search bar up here, which is, I always find a little bit of a manual process, especially if you have kind of up to hundreds of terms in a campaign, and so you can upload a CSV file format as well. And just import those. And you will see that there's a little clock um, icon on all of these terms, and I'm not actually on the portfolio. This basically means that the portfolio is still loading. Um, these typically take about an hour to load, so once that clock face has disappeared, that means that you're good to kind of report on this portfolio um, from the report panel. Okay, so now if we click onto the reports tab in the toolbar, so you just go from reports and run a report, we can now start to delve the rankings data that we have. So again, we're going to use the example of Skyscanner. And firstly, we're just going to profile the site to establish which industries the site is actually categorized into. So here I have my subject as a website, <coughs> the website being Skyscanner, and we're looking at total visits to this website for the most recent monthly data, which is the August data. So we can see that Skyscanner actually falls into two sub-industries, so into the travel agencies sub-industry and also travel transport. It falls into the travel parent industry, and obviously it also falls into all industries, um, where it is ranking at number 255 of, of all websites within all industries. So you can actually click through to any of these um, industries to get some more information, but what we'll do is we'll click through to travel agencies to get an understanding of where Skyscanner sits within this industry. So as before, you can choose the type of rankings report that you wish to run, so you can kind of uh, make any amendments that you need to the reporting period and also the end date because we have access to historical data down here. But what I really want to um, point out is the daily data that we have in the platform allows you to really easily assess the impact of a campaign that it's having on visits quite immediately. Um, and this is really, really handy for key sale periods within perhaps the travel industry or the retail industry. So looking at the results, we can see that Skyscanner sits in, in um, fourth place behind whatif.com and they have a 7.77% visit share, market share for the month of August <coughs> and we can also see the total visit numbers as well. The Skyscanner has had um, just under 3.2 million visits um, to the site within the month of August. So you'll also notice that there are quite a number of calls to actions buttons um, in these reports. So all of these calls to actions are applicable across all of the report types that we have up here, but I'll just kind of demonstrate them for you in the ranking version. So firstly, export. This basically allows you to extract the data into a CSV file format. So you can either select all of the data within here, or perhaps just select um, a certain number of websites that you want the information on. So once you've that. This gives you the ability to um, kind of overlay this information with other data sources that you might have. Charting. This allows you to update any of the charts in the second section of the report um, with the selected records, um, as opposed to just the, the default that you get at the moment. So, for example, if I wanted to look at the top five performing websites, I can update the chart and we'll see those four, sorry, those five competitors chart against each other. You can just make this a little bit larger. <coughs> and basically these charts are here to show shifting trends amongst competitors and across industries overall. So this first chart is looking at market share and also total visits of selected websites. So you could just change the metric up here to total visits. Um, if you want to have that view, um, or again, if you want to look at market share, you can do. 
So it's very dependent on what metrics you prefer to use um, or require internally. So then the second graph, this is looking at the share um, an industry makes up of all visits online and also total visits as well. So the combination of total visits for the whole for that whole industry. <coughs> this report in particular is pretty vital for giving you that competitive context. So if you're seeing perhaps visits to your site decreasing or not at the level that you'd expect necessarily, this report will be able to determine whether that's perhaps consistent across the industry um, or whether it's just specific to your site. So another call to action is the add to dashboard feature. This basically allows you to add the selected report to a dashboard which will then automatically update and can be shared as a link um, to users who may not necessarily have a hit wide license, which I think is a really, really um, useful feature of the tool. So if you just click add to dashboard, you can either um, add the module to a new dashboard by giving it a name and clicking create, or you can add it to an existing dashboard, which I have here, and I'll just take you through to that view to, to show you how the dashboards look. So all of these modules um, automatically update and you can obviously move the modules around and kind of make notes in the titles and also in the notes section should you need to kind of um, remind yourself of any key information in that report. And then the final call to action is the add to custom list functionality. Build a custom list direct from a report rather than navigating back to the custom list area of the tool. So in this example, <coughs> a sky scanner, I might want to isolate perhaps the top few um, travel ag aggregator sites and group them into an industry. So I can just select perhaps these websites and add them to either a new custom industry so we'll just call this travel aggregators and create some ads, or you can add them to an existing industry down here. So the compare feature can also be used to identify um, movers and shakers within a chosen industry and is a really, really helpful component to the rankings report. <coughs> Sorry, um, to easily establish what's changing over time in terms of threats and also opportunities. So using a different example here, we'll look at the blogs and personal websites industry. I'm going to highlight the fastest moving sites month on month for that industry. So if we just compare that to last month and click generate, <coughs> so in this example we can see that um, Pinterest has actually seen the greatest increase in market share growth between the months of July and August 2016 and they've seen a 0.66% growth in market share. Okay, so the next report I'll take you through is Clickstream. <coughs> Sorry about that. So Clickstream has many applications, including identifying key channels for your sector, showcasing the traffic that you send to a partner, or perhaps uncovering new competitors. If you see an increase in visits for a competitor, this area of reporting will help to establish what worked for them and which channel drove the increase. So with Clickstream, our methodology allows us to measure how people flow from one site to the next, irrespective of whether they click through to a site from a direct link. <coughs> Capturing browsing behavior is vital, and clients frequently tell us that the data we provide on the visits after their website is integral to um, addressing competitive threats, as this isn't information that they can get from their own site-centric data. And it also helps them to understand more about what their audience is interested in. 
So as with rankings, we can run this data um, daily, weekly, or monthly with different reports to either analyze where the traffic came from, which is what we call the upstream, or where traffic went to afterwards, which is what we call the downstream. So using ASOS as our example, and we're going to use the full summary reports in HitWise, <coughs> looking at monthly data. This is showing both upstream and downstream traffic for this site. So you have that real summary view of all the traffic. This is basically where ASOS can build a competitive set based on what consumers do online as opposed to, um, or just basing it on their, their own assumptions. It kind of gives them some um, detail behind that. So we actually see that the iconic is their biggest threat, ranking as the top competitor visitors both before and after their site, which is really quite significant. <coughs> In fact, a sizable, we can see 3.76% um, of traffic left ASOS last month to go to the iconic, which is really quite a considerable amount of traffic to be lost. So other prominent competitors to make an appearance actually include the likes of, we have Boohoo, um, eBay, quite a lot of traffic off there, and also Adidas and um, Misguided. So if we actually click through to the full report of Upstream Industries, um, we can see who has visited, where people have gone before visiting ASOS, and we can actually do a direct comparison to the iconic. <coughs> Apologies about the cough. Um, and if we open the compare feature here, and we do um, upstream industries visited before ASOS compared to the iconic, and generate the report. So this is basically going to help us establish um, how reliant these websites are on particular channels and where they differ as well. So the monthly data is highlighting that <coughs> ASOS is actually more reliant on traffic from social channels. Underline, this is actually a real strength for them. The same functionality here um, applies here, so you can click through to this social networking um, sub-industry and see the breakdown of all the social websites that are driving traffic to ASOS. And then additionally, we can see the likes of email services. We can see that um, their reliance on email is higher again than the iconic. So there's real kind of insights into digital strategies there and also the key channels. So from here, we can flip this to look at the traffic that we see kind of leaving an industry as opposed to the um, traffic coming from an industry. So <coughs> if we look at the email industry on a daily basis um, to see the visits that ASOS and the Iconic are receiving from that industry to kind of establish which emails are resonating more with customers. So subscribing to these emails and tracking these alongside HitWise data can help establish what's working for competitors. So for example, we see that ASOS received really quite a significant um, increase in the downstream traffic from email um, on the 24th of September. <coughs> so this is a particularly successful campaign for them in relation to kind of anything that they've done um, throughout the month as well, um, and as well compared to the, the Iconic's performance as well. So these kind of reports can be rep replicated for the other key channels. So perhaps you might look at um, the downstream websites filtered by <coughs> the websites that you want to look at for perhaps social or even news and media providers that you work closely with. OK, so clickstream reports are frequently used in pitch packs as well. So they can demonstrate the share of traffic that are being sent to perhaps the partner's website. So in this example, we're going to look at Ausbargains and the downstream websites from Ausbargains. So that's basically saying, what is all the traffic um, that is being driven from Ausbargains? Um, so obviously, Ausbargains is a pr pretty familiar site for most people. 
um, and trying to understand uh, the partnerships and the value of the partnerships that um, people have with that website. So the downstream websites we see, um, you're looking at Masters Home Improvements, for example, they're receiving a 1.59% of the traffic that's coming from our bargains. So this is a pretty compelling insight for them to go to Masters and say, this is the strength of our partnership. Um, and then also looking further down, we see the likes of Harvey Norman and perhaps JV Hi-Fi, and they might look at this information and say that they're actually not receiving as big a piece of the pilot <coughs> as they might initially have thought they would have. So can these brands use this information um, in, negoti in negotiations that they have with us bargains? Um, just to kind of re-evaluate the strength of their partnership. Okay, so that's Clickstream. And um, lastly, moving on to search intelligence. This is probably the most <coughs> multifaceted module in the platform. So there's quite a lot to see here. So one of the best reports to run in search is a website search share report because this is um, basically allowing you to benchmark your performance for search within your industry. In this example, we'll look at um, the Hitwise insurance industry, but remember you can kind of change this out to a custom industry if you want to just look at uh, those top five or top six competitors that you're interested in. So <laughs> running the website search share report over the past four weeks, we see that out of 334 sites that have been returned, <coughs> I select actually have the greatest share of search clicks um, with a 7.2% search share. And they also have a paid rate of 7.78%. So having a look kind of through all of the competitors, we see that the industry probably has around an average of a 50% paid rate across the board. <coughs> But I suppose to understand how paid strategy changes for a competitor over time, you can utilize the charting, um, which is the same as rankings. You can just populate down at the bottom here um, to understand um, how that kind of paid strategy is changing over time. And it also is going to allow you to kind of plan your PPC budgets accordingly. So I've just kind of selected the top five competitors um, the top five websites from here and updated the chart. And we can see that there's been some movement over the past kind of 52 weeks in terms of search share. But with iSelect, I suppose, moving away from the other competitors um, around the June, July time, very significant time in the <clears throat> financial calendar. Um, and you can also change these metrics out to look at um, perhaps just a paid rate or just the organic rate as well to see how people's paid strategy is changing over time. So that's obviously quite, uh, <clears throat> seen some quite considerable changes over time there. So to get a more granular view of what a competitor is doing in terms of their search strategy um, at a real I suppose granular level, we can profile searches at a website level. And in this example, we're going to use Booper. So what I've done is selected the website as my subject. And we're looking at Booper and we're looking at search terms. <coughs> and we're also looking at search clicks over the past four weeks. So over the past month, we have actually seen um, 1,394 unique terms drive traffic to Booper's website. So with the likes of um, Booper Travel Insurance being the top product referenced here, and then also Health Insurance being the top generic search term there. So we actually didn't see it in this example, um, but you may often see evidence of companies actually bidding on their competitive brands. So um, perhaps Allianz would feature in the, the top 100 search terms that are actually driving traffic to Booper. Um, but Booper have been good in this instance because they're not they're not in that um, top 20, so that's good of them. So this report basically um, provides an immediate snapshot of a competitor's paid strategy. Um, it shows what their kind of content plan is and also what their reliance is on their brand terms.
Okay, so next we'll look at search term variations to establish how consumers are searching right now. So we're going to use the example of credit cards and also a broad match um, search variation report on that um, to kind of see what variations of that ha have happened in the past four weeks. So when, and we're just looking at searches here. <coughs> Go back to the start. So we can actually see that there were 3,971 unique variations for this term in the past four weeks, which is quite a considerable amount. Um, and we see that Cole's credit card was the top term, um, and it had a 2.16% search share, which is pretty significant, and also a success rate of 91.48%. So this um, success rate is basically the percentage of these searches that result, um, resulted in a successful click um, to a website. So we're capturing all terms searched for, and not just those that were deemed successful with a click. So if you wanted to create a portfolio of terms based on this Hitwise data, you can do that quite easily from here as well. Um, yeah, just a, as well as the kind of custom list component that we, we talked through earlier. Um, and what you can do is select all the terms that you want to group together. So we might perhaps um, want to look at the top, group together the top 400 search terms, and we can create the port portfolio from here. So we can either add the selection to a new portfolio or add them to an, exist an existing one down here. Okay, so next moving on to individual keyword reports. Um, Winning a keyword report shows that the singular um, card here was actually more, much more searched for than the plural cards down here, which is actually just, it seems quite um, trivial, but that's that kind of change in percentage from 86.48% to 14.57% search share is really, really quite significant. Um, and then we look at kind of other terms that are popular. So we see that Australia and BEST are some of the top generic search terms associated with these searches. So this report's a great find to kind of find the smartest terms to be prioritized when it comes to your um, content and also your site tags. So this, um, looking at the kind of report setup for this, we're looking at searches currently. But we can actually change this metric out to search clicks. So again, just reporting on kind of terms that have actively driven traffic to the website or to a website. So this kind of changes the top 10, which takes them out to the top 20 quite, um, quite considerably. So out of the top 10 terms, credit was understandably uh, the most competitive term uh, with a 100% um, search click <coughs> success rate. Um, and they also had a paid rate of 28.78%, which is um, still fairly significant. So running a search term variations report will ensure that you're kind of integrating the most relevant terms consumers are searching for within your content and meta tags. But I suppose most importantly, um, it allows you to kind of prioritize the terms within your PPC campaigns. So pretty helpful. OK, so <clears throat> what about the competitive view? Um, looking at one of the generic search terms, which was credit card compare, um, this is going to start to give us a bit more of a, the external view that we were talking about <coughs> earlier. So um, looking at this search term, <coughs> looking at credit card compare as a search term and the downstream websites from there. Um, and in the past four weeks, again, we see that credit card compare was the website that actually received the most traffic with a 51% um, share of the search clicks. And then that was closely followed, well, not as closely followed, but followed by Credit Card Finder with a 34.87% share of the search clicks as well. So to get a full view of your performance for a specific product, it's actually really important at this stage to have a search term portfolio in place so that when you're looking at um, 
So you're actually looking at a collection of terms and not just one term in isolation. So obviously this is just looking at credit card compare on its on its own. What are the kind of downstream websites receiving traffic? But when you have a group of kind of thousands of terms or perhaps hundreds of thousands of terms, um, you start to get a, quite a different view of um, who overall was perhaps the best um, or the biggest winner receiving traffic um, from credit card terms. So if we just switch the um, reporting metrics out slightly, and I'll change this out to a portfolio. <coughs> and this is a um, portfolio of terms I've put together for credit card comparisons. And again, we're just going to look at the downstream websites from here and click Generate. And we see that there's actually been a bit of a difference um, in the results of the, of the websites receiving traffic. So we see that Credit Card Finder was actually the top site here to receive terms, um, oh, sorry, re receiving the biggest share of search clicks with a 34.51% um, search share. <coughs> so you can also use the comparison feature in search um, to run this kind of analysis for perhaps month on month or even year on year to show the movers and shakers as we did with rankings before. Um, and, these, and that's going to kind of identify the key threats from these from these terms. So if I just open up the comparison feature, and we're again looking at the same portfolio, credit card comparison, and we're looking for a year-to-year -year comparison. So we actually see that credit card compare has seen a 12% increase in search clicks percentage from terms of this portfolio year on year, which is really quite a significant increase. Um, <coughs> downstream from a portfolio of data, it can be, I suppose, used to demonstrate your success for a particular product area and also to encourage people to work with you. Okay, so last but not least is the portfolio performance report within search. Um, I suppose building out different portfolios across different products or services is going to help you to plan your campaigns more effectively. So this is a slightly less intuitive um, way of running a report compared to some of the others. So bear with me, but once you get to grips with this functionality, this is going to be a really, really useful report for you. So to run the report, you actually need to go to search engines as the subject. We want to look at all search engines and then the report type is going to be a portfolio performance report. And once you generate that report, <coughs> that is going to bring up all of the portfolios within your access so that <coughs> you can then chart those portfolios over time to start to look into the, the seasonality of those terms. So looking at um, Mother's Day as an example here, <coughs> we can basically break out um, the different portfolios into things like overall Mother's Day search terms. It could be all the Mother's Day card related terms or perhaps Mother's Day gift ideas or presents. Um, so that's going to give you kind of um, quite a, a different view of when, when these terms are starting to peak. So if we just chart those three portfolios over time, I'm going to look at a 52-week view. You can start to see the Mother's Day terms kind of start, started to pick up kind of as early as January, but it really kind of pinpoints what was that kind of significant week that was um, the activity just kind of grew exponentially and, and search demand grew um, so that people can, I suppose, capitalize on that time of year. So yeah, it's when it's looking at when did campaigns peak this year in order to plan ahead um, and plan successfully for the next year. So you can use them to gauge kind of overall search demand and prioritize key products. So for example, say in summer, um, for retailers, is it perhaps dresses or shorts are more popular this year? And then you can feed this information on into, into merchandising teams um, and campaign teams. So there is, of course, lots more to see across the board in these reports. 
that we haven't actually touched on today. So these include um, lifestyle reporting, which tells you who your audience is online. It actually uses um, experience offline segmentation classification, which is called Mosaic. Um, we also um, haven't covered off demographics, demographics, which showcases the visits by age, gender, and states. And also device data, which highlights the mobile desktop split for websites and industries all extremely valuable for developing um, your online strategies. So again, we'll be running webinars on these areas in the near future. If you do ever get stuck using the tool, you can navigate to the training link at the bottom of the page, which is down here. Um, and that takes you to a page um, full of all of our resources that includes kind of um, training, um, how-to guides and video guides. Um, you can also refer to the methodology FAQ section. And if you can't find the information that you need in the platform, then you can always access our contact details um, from the con contact us tab down here. And that's got our email address, um, so you can send us over an email and, and we'll get back to you um, as soon as we can. So to finish up, I just wanted to talk about what's changed at Hitwise in the recent months as I'm sure that lots of you by now have heard um, about our additional capabilities available through audience view. It's pretty exciting. Again, something that came out quite strongly in our client survey was that clients are interested to know more about this platform. So I suppose, what, what is audience view? It, um, it helps marketers, media, and agencies alike to achieve meaningful in engagement with customers and audiences by fueling their kind of planning process with the most complete insight into who they are and what they think and how they interact with media. So the tool actually allows you to find, identify and quantify the size of your audience, allows you to maximize efficiency by targeting the right audience segments, learn about what content interests your um, target consumer audiences, profile the lifestyles, interests and behaviors of audiences for more meaningful engagement and also to support driven decisions. So audience view insights can help us um, can help brands efficiently target those in, in the market for their product only, um, which kind of minimizes finance, financial wastage and increases overall performance of any marketing campaigns. What makes AV or audience view unique is kind of the large source of timely online audience behavior um, combined with a vivid kind of vivid consumer profiles and offline shopping behaviors. Marketers are able to build unique um, custom audiences on the fly and to analyze those audiences to learn key insights and that will inform their marketing plans. So just a couple of the questions that marketers can kind of look to answer with audience view. Um, what's the audience overlap of customers to visit my site and my competitive site as well? What's the unique audience that visits my site only? Um, what content is my audience most likely to engage with so I can create more meaningful messaging? And who are the audience that converts on my website? And where can um, I find more of them? It's probably the most important question that we can answer. And then finally, this is an example of the insights and, ta and, insights and takeaways that can be found by building an audience in AV. So this audience is people that have visited the Apple website and are um, a mosaic group I, which is books and boots. So these are typically um, kind of your students and also early adopters of technology. So suppose this demonstrates how you can tailor make your audience based on particular parameters. You could also perhaps build a segment based on search behavior. For example, grouping people together that have searched for an iPhone or an Apple product in the last four weeks. <coughs> What we see is this audience is more likely to be um, in the 25 to 34 age bracket, more likely to be male, and more likely to be found on music and poker sites. So interestingly, what can be taken away here is that whilst Apple is a huge brand that would typically take um, perhaps a mass market approach um, with an, a new iPhone release, because I'm sure they think that every man and his dog should have, a, uh, have an iPhone, um, that this audience is actually less likely to be found um, than the online population to visit the traditional news and media sites, so for example, The Age um, and the Sydney Morning Herald. So their marketing dollars uh, would be spent perhaps more efficiently by advertising with the news sites that they're 
more likely to reach their audience on. So the key difference between Hitwise and AB is that audience view has been designed to be audience centric in site versus the traditional site centric in order to understand the user behind the behavior and the ability to size that audience. So over the years, clients have let us know that they'd love to see um, kind of numbers applied to our search data and audience view allows us to do this. So that concludes the webinar for today. I really hope you found it useful. Um, if you do have any questions off the back, then please do get in touch via our support email address, and that is support.au at hitwise.com. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of your day.